Hey everyone, welcome back to our theory overview. I'm not sure if that's the name we're going to keep, but it seems descriptive enough and ironically I can't come up with anything more creative, so let's just go with it for now. Today we're talking about values. This video is kind of a continuation of the last one, but you don't need to watch that one to understand what we're going to talk about today. We will discuss what values are, why they're so important, and how we can use them as well. So let's begin. What are values? Well, one good way to look at it is that the value of a color is the likeness of a color. So let's just bring these two cubes onto my desk, one being blue and the other being blue, but clearly there is a difference between these. What is that difference? Well, Put on your black and white goggles and you'll see that the one on the right is darker and the one on the left is brighter. Alright, but what does this mean? Well, now that we've made them black and white, we can see that the cubes have different values. One being generally lighter and the other being generally darker. In fact, every color has a value. Let's look at another example. So this dark blue has a darker or lower value than this orange. And this light blue has a lighter or higher value than that same orange. Maybe you can see this right off the bat, but a good way to see which colors have a lighter or darker value is by simply applying a black and white filter. But instead of seeing values as a subset of color, we should try and see them on the same level. In fact, many times artists will tell you that values are more important than colors. And why is that? Well, values are directly related to light. Vision is dependent on light, and the only way to see something is if that object interacts with that light. And the parts of an object that are further away from the light source will naturally be less lit up. This also applies if something is blocking the light from reaching the surface, or if the surface is angled away from the light. This gradual decrease in light makes it so some parts of the object are darker than others. These values, and the difference between these values, is what lets us see the object and tells us about its three-dimensional form. Depending on how a scene is lit, values will look different. So in a simple scene like this, where we just have a cube, if we move our light source, we can see that the values of this cube are clearly changing. In one situation, you might have a dark value on the right side, and if you move the light source, you might have a dark value on the left side of the cube. So not only do values tell us about the form of an object, but they also tell us about the lighting situation. Where is the light source? From which side is the light coming? Really what this tells us is that values are not just about individual objects and their form. Values also play a huge role in a bigger context. And this brings us to the topic of value range. Technically, there's an infinite amount of values you could use, all the way from the darkest black to the lightest white. But this does not mean that you have to use every single one of these values in your art. Instead, what you can do is pick a value range, a range of values from dark to light that you can work with. Using a limited value range will make things a lot easier when working with values. Okay, so now I feel like we should try all that stuff out. So let's do that by actually drawing a sphere here. Uh, first, we should try and pick a pretty simple value range. So this right here could be our darkest value. Pick uh, some lighter values here, maybe like that. A couple more, like that. There we go. So that's our value range that we're using for this sphere. Do that. Here we go. Let's assume our light source is to the left. So I'm going to pick uh, this slightly lighter mid-tone and kind of Put in some light. Because our light is coming from the left, we know that, it, that the right side of the sphere is going to be darker. So now we're adding the darkest value here to our sphere. We'll add a bit of light coming in from here. And now lastly, we can go ahead and add our highlights, maybe right there, and then we might make that a bit brighter. And if we want to go one step further, we can actually go ahead and add a cast shadow. I'm gonna cheese it a little bit and just do it 
kind of simply. Just gonna copy that, move this over here so we can just fill this shape in. Photoshop fill, the darkest value that we have. There we go. Like so maybe, maybe a bit more on the very edge. So there you go, something like that. <laughs> here you have a pretty simple sphere. And we're using all the stuff we talked about earlier, the values, the value range, uh, in order to create a shape that looks more three-dimensional than just a circle. But wait a minute, aren't we missing something here? What if you don't care about the direction of lighting? What if you don't care about three-dimensional form? I mean, cubes are okay, but spheres, man, I don't really know. Those spheres have been kind of freaking me out recently. Should you still care about values? Well, of course you should, and here's why. I talked a little bit about this in my last video, but essentially, if you have several colors, several hues with similar values and you put them next to each other, they will kind of appear to blend together. And this is because there's very little value contrast going on here. The colors don't look like they contrast because their values don't. The values are very similar. So what I'm really saying here is that values are a very important structural component in paintings. And the easiest way to see this is of course to look at some examples. So here's a painting by French painter Paul Cézanne. A pretty cool looking still life, and what's important for us to notice here is how the colors, the hues, are changing throughout the painting. We see some soft purples and soft reds in the green. We see some soft pinks in the blue, and so on. There's a lot of shifting in hue here, but still the painting looks pretty realistic and really harmonious. And the way we can understand this is by applying our black and white filter. As soon as we do this, we see that not only does the painting work in color, but it also works really well in black and white. And this kind of explains why the colors that are changing so much don't really affect how the image looks and its structure. And that's because the values are what actually make up the structure of this painting, not the colors. But maybe that's a little bit too subtle, so let's take a look at something a bit more extreme. Here's another still life, also by Cezanne, and here we see a watermelon and a couple of pomegranates. Now, even though the colors are basically all over the place here, we see a bunch of blues bleeding through everywhere, tons of green and yellow, but still, it's pretty easy to tell what you're looking at. And that is why this is such a good example of how important values are. Even though the colors vary quite wildly in some sections, there is still no loss of clarity. The values are doing all the heavy lifting here. And now for a final example. Here's a painting by Rembrandt, and we see something pretty different about this one. There's very little color information here. Like, yeah, there are some colors, but they're so subtle, and it's all very, very dark. But despite being very different from the previous paintings, in this case being darker and less colorful, we can still tell what's going on. And this is, of course, once again because most of the structure in a painting lies in its values. Curiously, there are some areas of this painting that are much harder to see than others. If we take a look at the hat here, it's almost blending into the background. Not necessarily because it has the same color, but because the values are very similar. There's also some cool stuff going on in the bust. There's actually a decent amount of variation in hue here, some reds, some yellows, and some blues even. But it all looks pretty hazy, and that's because all of these hues have very similar values. And the point in all three of these examples is to show how values play a very important structural role in a painting. You can have as much or as little color as you like, but as long as the values are all there, it's gonna look good. Learning to work effectively with values is a super good idea. Doing that will give you so much more freedom when working with art. There's a lot more you could say about values. Really, you could talk about this stuff for hours. With that said, I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you liked it and I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time.